it's Wednesday evening. Uh, welcome to our little evening prayer. The Lord says in uh, Ezekiel chapter 37, he says, I will put my spirit in you and you will live. So some words of introduction. The Lord Almighty grant us a quiet night and a perfect end. Amen. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. So save us, O Lord, while waking, and guard us while sleeping, that awake we may watch with Christ, and asleep we may rest in peace. Amen. Well, something a little bit different for you this evening. Many of you will know Aaron from church. Um, uh, he's been uh, on a training course in Liverpool, learning how to handle the scriptures and how to teach it. And uh, he's recorded for you um, a talk that he prepared for the Northwest uh, Partnership course on Nicodemus in John 3. You remember when Jesus was buried, Joseph of Arimathea um, uh, provided uh, a tomb for him. And uh, together with Nicodemus, they prepared Jesus body for burial Nicodemus who by that point obviously is is a believer um, in the in the Lord Jesus but here we meet him in John 3 <clears throat> now there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus a member of the Jewish ruling council he came to Jesus at night and said rabbi we know you are a teacher who has come from God for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him in reply Jesus declared I tell you the truth no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying, you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the Spirit. How can this be? Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, Jesus said. And do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth. We speak of what we know and we testify to what we have seen. But still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? No one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. Well, how do you have eternal life? That's the question uh, that Nicodemus and Jesus are discussing. Aaron's going to explain for us. Welcome to this talk, Saints Dears. My name's Aaron. I'm one of the congregation there. Following on from our celebration of Easter, we're going to think a little bit more about who Jesus is and why he came to earth. We're going to do this by looking at a man who met Jesus face to face, and his name is Nicodemus. He thought Jesus was just merely a good moral teacher, and that's a very common view of Jesus even today. And we're going to look at the conversation had between Nicodemus and Jesus that's recorded by John, who was a follower of Jesus at the time. Now Nicodemus is a religious leader, a Pharisee, a ruler of the Jews, and so he should really know his Old Testament. The Old Testament makes up the first half of the Bible, and it explains about God to the Jews. It was written hundreds of years before Jesus. So we come to the meeting, and Nicodemus comes to Jesus at night, and he says this, Rabbi, we know you are a teacher who has come from God, for no one could perform the miraculous signs you are doing if God were not with him. In reply, Jesus declared, I tell you the truth, no one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. At first glance, that might seem a strange answer to Nicodemus' question. But just before this conversation, John has told us that Jesus knew what was in man. He knew exactly what was in Nicodemus, so he knew exactly how to answer him. So Nicodemus starts questioning Jesus. How can a man be born when he is old? Nicodemus asked. Surely he cannot enter a second time into his mother's womb to be born. Jesus answered, I tell you the truth, no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the spirit. Flesh gives birth to flesh, but the spirit gives birth to spirit. You should not be surprised at my saying you must be born again. The wind blows wherever it pleases. You hear its sound, but you cannot tell where it comes from or where it is going. So it is with everyone born of the spirit. If you want to see the kingdom of God, 
if that's what you really want to see. You need to be born again to see it. It's not something you can work hard enough to achieve. You can't earn a place there. You have to be born again to be able to see it. Born by the Spirit. What this picture shows us is that it's not by our effort that we get there. It's by someone else's effort. In this case, the Spirit. In the first birth, it's our mother's effort that allows the baby to be born. Because the baby's so fragile, so small. It's the mother that does all the hard work. In this, it's the Spirit that fundamentally changes someone. It's not just a like a bit of hard work by us, it's a fundamental change in our being to be able to see the kingdom of God. And the other thing is it's like the wind, the spirit is like the wind. We don't see where it comes from, nor where it goes. Can't stop it, we can only see its effect. Well, it's at this point we start to learn about where Nicodemus's position is, because he says this, how can that be, Nicodemus asked. You are Israel's teacher, said Jesus, and do you not understand these things? I tell you the truth, we speak of what we know, and we testify to what we have seen, but still you people do not accept our testimony. I have spoken to you of earthly things, and you do not believe. How then will you believe if I speak of heavenly things? See, Nicodemus should have understood and believed these things. He was Israel's teacher, as Jesus said, and it was all in the Old Testament. You see, in the Old Testament, God had promised in a book called Ezekiel, that he would use water to clean people from all their impurities and he would give them a new spirit so that they, he would move them to be able to keep his decrees and follow his laws. He promised water and the spirit to fundamentally change people so they could be his people. And Jesus says, unless one is born of water and the spirit, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It's all from an Old Testament prophecy. So Nicodemus should have understood. You see, the problem with people is fundamentally we don't want to follow God. We aren't pure, we don't love God as we should, we don't love other people as we should. We need to be changed, we need to be washed of all our impurities and given a new spirit so we can follow God as, as we should. And that's why we need to be born again to see the kingdom of God. And in John, Jesus tells us how this is going to happen. In verse 13, no one has ever gone into heaven except the one who came from heaven, the Son of Man. Just as Moses was, must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in just as Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, so the Son of Man must be lifted up, that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. The Son of Man is the name and name Jesus uses for himself, and he says he has to be lifted up like the snake in the wilderness. Now this is another Old Testament reference. In Numbers, the people, they reject God, they rebel. And so God sends venomous snakes in judgment on them. Anyone who's bitten dies. But because they turn to God and pray, and Moses prays to God, God um, says to them, if they set a bronze serpent on a pole and anyone who's been bitten that looks at the bronze serpent, they'll live, even though they've been bitten by the judgment. And Jesus says it's like that with him. You see that people deserve to be judged for not following God, having their impurities. But what Jesus says is, if you look to me on the cross and believe in me, then you won't die, you'll live. In fact, you get an eternal life. John goes on to explain it in this passage. In verse 16 onwards, for God so loved the world that he gave his one and only son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. For God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through him. Whoever believes in him is not condemned, but whoever does not believe stands condemned already, because he has not believed in the name of God's one and only son. You see, the way that we get to see the kingdom of God is by looking to Jesus on the cross and believing that he has taken away our sin, our impurities, so that we can come to God and have a life with him. Being born again is the same as coming to have faith with Jesus. It's a work of the Spirit. It's an amazing work, a fundamental change in us. If you want to be born again, then you need to have the, the Spirit and um, do that in your life so you can see Jesus as your Saviour. If you do want to know more about that, please... Um, uh, please contact us on the phone number or email address supplied. And as a final note, just for a piece of interest, Nicodemus, at this point in the story, he just didn't get it. He hadn't been born again, so he couldn't see Jesus for who he really was, the saviour of the world. But at the end of John's Gospel, Nicodemus comes up again, and this time he's burying Jesus after his death on the cross. This time he's presumably a follower of Jesus, so he must have been born again. God bless. Well, Aaron, thank you very much for recording that for us. Let me uh, lead us in a few prayers. 
our Father God, at this unsettling time, at this time where uh, many of us will be uh, reminded of our mortality, of the fragility of life. Our Father, we thank you for this opportunity to hear again of Jesus' offer of life eternal, of new birth. And uh, we thank you that Jesus made that possible by himself, laying down his life, like Moses lifted up the snake in the desert, the Son of Man. We were thinking on Good Friday, Jesus lifted up on the cross uh, for our salvation. We pray, Father God, that you would uh, help us to trust in him uh, for the life that you alone can give us because of the Lord Jesus. And uh, we pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. We also pray, continue to pray, Father, at this time for uh, our leaders. Uh, we pray for our uh, NHS and uh, for all those working so hard. Uh, Father, we uh, pray for those already uh, grieving the loss of loved ones. And we pray for all those who are anxious about loved ones. We think particularly of uh, those who are in nursing care and care homes, uh, those caring for them, but also the families that are unable uh, to visit their loved ones. And Father, we ask for us as a church family that during this time, you'd keep us loving and serving each other, keep us in touch with each other. And we pray that you would help us to hold out to our parish at this time, the offer of life, eternal life, new birth, uh, because of the Lord Jesus Christ. And so we bring these prayers in Jesus' name. Amen. So be present, O merciful God, and protect us through the silent hours of this night, so that we who are wearied by the changes and chances of this fleeting world may rest upon your eternal changelessness through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And in conclusion... In peace we will lie down and sleep, for you alone, Lord, make us dwell in safety. So the Lord bless us and watch over us. The Lord make his face to shine upon us and be gracious to us. The Lord look kindly upon us and give us peace. Amen. Good night.